I miss Mega Evolutions. Wow, Kev, that's actually so crazy and actually amazing because actually Mega Evolutions are actually coming back in Generation 10. Yeah, I know. Thank you. That's what inspired this video. I was uh, thinking about the impact they had on the game when they were around. Uh, which I realize makes me old at this point. You know, it doesn't make me as much of a dinosaur as remembering the days before Scizor got bullet punch, but still, puts me up there. Uh, but, yeah, I was uh, thinking about what they did for the game and what they might do for the game for the future. Obviously, there's n no information with which to make any sort of reasonable expectations. Like, I, I can't say whether Terra is going to stay around alongside Megas, and a... A, terror, a terrestrializing Mega Evolution sounds kind of absurd, of course, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Dynamax didn't stick around, so maybe Terra won't either. Uh, who's to say? Uh, all we are doing today is thinking about how we will look to the future by looking briefly into the past. So, I really like what Megas did for the game. Obviously, when Gen 6 was current, then it was in vogue to hate it, just like it always is in the current gen. Uh, but eventually we, we kind of figured it out. I mean, there's always chaos when the generation is current and you're figuring out the, what the fundamentals of the metagame are going to be. And there are teams that, and, you know, basic structures that stand the, step, the test of time and you'll go back and look at old replays and you know, wow, this team was so fundamentally solid and they'll be facing something absolutely inane. It's like, and wow, this was for a big tournament too and a good player was using it. Wow, times are different. You know, so... And that uh, kind of extended couple of years where you're figuring things out, then <laughs> it can look uh, strange in retrospect. But yeah, that was the general opinion on Megas and, oh, power creep broken. And of course, there are always going to be Megas that are going to be absolutely insane. But then, you know, once you get rid of the really ridiculous ones, then you find that... I, I find anyway, and I think most people would agree on this, that they actually add a lot to the game. Uh, I think the Pokemon that are just essentially better versions of themselves, like Scizor and the Megalodes, they are really helpful for bringing out the innate, useful qualities of those Pokemon, and you know, improving them, you know, their stats and everything, to keep up with the tide of Power Creep without being overbearing. And then there are, of course, uh, completely new strategies enabled by weaker Pokemon getting Mega Evolutions that then bring them into OU viability. Like, you know, on the screen right now, there's a Manectric. So, yeah, I generally like what they did. And when uh, Gen 7 came out, we still had Megas around, we were thinking, hey, you know what, these things are actually pretty good. And then when Oris became an old Gen, we got that sort of uh, hinds uh, hindsight, we got that perspective, and we said, you know what, this is, this is actually pretty good. You know, And there weren't any really more contentious Megas because we got rid of Sableye. And, I mean, you know, Sableye is stupid even without Dugtrio. I know there's some people who will go, free Sableye, but you do not want that kind of matchup divider, you know, of that scale around in the tier. It just makes it worse, I promise. But, yeah, I mean, even uh, even when the gen was still current, once things had settled down and started to take a more defined shape, then people weren't really crying power creep anymore because you know, nobody was getting run over by Megas' power after a while. I mean, yeah, there were really scary ones, like, oh, Zardex is very threatening after a DD, tough to revenge kill, all that stuff. You know, things like Diancie are strong, Metagross, arguably, you know, borderline. But generally, they, they felt very palatable. Uh, and the only one that really got contentious for a while was Mega Metacham, which is still pretty insane, but eventually, you know, people figured out how to play around it like uh, anything else. So... I find that Megas are very balanced because, I mean, and this is a relatively new perspective, but because they're not so min-maxed. You know, there's a lot of discussion about the Gen 9 strong pokes, and they are so min-maxed within an inch of their life that they, it's just absolutely insane. And even something like, um, you know, you see like Mega Charizard X getting a bunch of boosts to its special attack. You know, it, it doesn't use that. You know, CBB once used HP Grass Zardex to beat Stall. You know, that that's it. <laughs> you know, or Zard Y getting an attack boost. And other than CTC's uh, Flare Blitz Mega Zard Y, which was great in practice because you would lure in Chansey, but, or sorry, great in theory because you would lure in Chansey, but bad in practice against everything else. You know, but other than that, it doesn't use that. So, 
Uh, there's that and the fact that the Megas don't take a... They take a... There's one per team, and they don't have an item to work with. I mean, it also comes with a bonus of making them immune to knockoff. Or not immune, but you know what I mean. Immune to the knockoff item loss effect, which I think is extremely valuable nowadays. Ever since Megas and Z-Crystals dropped out of the game, you saw it in Gen 8, it was just a complete nightmare. Because you couldn't prevent any of your Pokemon from losing their items. Uh, and it was very, very obnoxious to deal with in the team builder and in the battle. And, yeah, so they offer protection against that and against Trick. And uh, they... Yeah, that, that was the other thing, Trick. <laughs> but uh, they also don't have an item to work with, you know, effectively. Which I think balances them out a lot. Uh, so you can't just, you know, in, in that sense, they remind me of Advance and, it, or, you know, the first three gens in general, but especially Advance for some reason, because of the power, probably. But the sense that they're never going to have a random choice scarf or a random lumberry or something you might not expect. They are, for as powerful as they are, they are known quantities. In, in terms of item, anyway, but actually, not in terms of item, in terms of how fast they're going to be. And I think, or, you know, their ability to take status. And you think, okay, yeah, but they're mega Pokemon. They're super strong. Yes, but think about all the great Pokemon that still really need to run Lumberry because otherwise they are going to be absolutely ruined by status. Or the Pokemon that really, really prefer the power of a choice item. Or you know, anything in that vein. And think about how you now have to keep your mega away from status at all costs. You know, not that this is an unreasonable task or anything, but it is a consideration to make. Or the fact that you will never be able to bluff a choice scarf or what have you with it. And I think it's a very interesting dynamic because the lack of predictability in figuring out, you know, oh, is that opponent's Latios or Keldeo scarf or specs uh, in Gen 5, for example. It doesn't really apply to Megas. And as and I'm not saying they don't have uh, unpredictability. Don't read that into it. Because something like Mega Metagross can really mess you up when you don't know its moveset. And, you know, <laughs> you make a lot of uh, a lot of assumptions. Oh, no way, that's Ice Punch. Oh, well, there goes my Gliscor, you know. Oh, no way, that's Pursuit. Oh, there goes my Latios. Uh, <laughs> no way, that's Bullet Punch. There goes my Weavile, you know, uh, or my Scarf Titar, whatever it is. Uh, so, uh, it's not that they're not predictable, but in they there's a certain element to their game that you will consistently be able to threaten them with. And that's part of what makes them so manageable. And, you know, they can't, they can't hold leftovers. You know, they're not going to be healing passively. I mean, I guess in Gen 7 you have Tapu Bulu's grassy terrain, but... Uh, yeah, and if there's grassy terrain Pokemon in Gen 10, then you'll have that. But for the most part, you see what I'm getting at. So, yeah, I think uh, the Megas strike a really good balance of bringing a lot of power to the game... And, you know, a bunch of other unique um, unique talents as well. Like, Mega Metagross is not just a, a slugger, a, a huge wall breaker, but it keeps so many Pokemon in check with its great typing and its utility moves. It's even a good stealth rocker. So, I think they bring a really... They bring extra stats to the game without being overbearing. I mean, other than the you know, extremes, of course. But, you know, most of the Megas are not overpowered. There are a couple that are crazy broken, sure. But in terms of percentage, that's only a, only a small small bunch of them. So, I thought we would uh, look at the Megas in action in this World Cup tiebreaker game between two Elite Ors players, Brofist and X-Ray, from August 2016. Good lord, <laughs> time flies. I was 20 years old. And, yeah, so we've got Manectric versus Scizor. I mean, there's no delusion here that that Garchomp is going to be the Mega uh, for Brofist. But, yeah, I think uh, I really like how Megas can either really enhance an element of an existing Pokemon's game uh, by, you know, updating it stat-wise for the new Onslaught of Power Creep, so, you know, Scizor, you know, Base Scizor is going to have a much tougher time standing up, but, you know, Mega Scizor, perfect, without being overbearing. Not just Mega Scizor either. The Lotties are a great example. Tyranitar's an amazing example. Uh, Mega Titar with Knockoff, that's going to be fun. And if, the, if it, all the old Megas come back, obviously. 
Uh, and, you know, even something like Garchomp, I mean, I know it gets slower, but it is a stronger version of itself, and it's still got a good speed stat, so. Mega Chomp is uh, underrated in Aorus, and I remember in Gen 7, it was, when it was current, then it was really getting its due, it was a great Pokemon. So, I like, po there's, po there's Megas like that, and then there's also Megas that add a completely new dimension to OU play, by buffing a Pokemon that you otherwise wouldn't see, you know, i.e. the one on the screen right now, Manectric. Uh, yeah, and I was also thinking of Altaria and how Mega Altaria was... Man, okay, my microphone is just bugging out for a second. I've called Quest. But, yeah, uh, let's get into it <laughs> for a second. I, I'm sure it only bugged out for a couple for a couple minutes. Call it that character from Do the Right Thing. Uh, yeah, Manectric versus Scizor is our mega matchup here. And Manectric obviously has the advantage over Scizor in a one-on-one. -on -one. But that's another thing. Like, while Megas are great, they're not just necessarily the best Pokemon on any given side just by virtue of being Megas. They really hit that sweet spot of, you know, a, an effective bolstering to whatever Pokemon they are without necessarily being, uh, I mean, I think it is necessary to run one on every team, you'd be silly not to, but that still leaves you so much variety, and it's not that they're suddenly going to be the best thing around. You know, it's not like the viability rankings are all the Mega Pokemon and then everything else. So, Manectric versus Scizor is going to start off with a Latios lead because Manectric is actually an enormous threat, which is why X-Ray leads it. And if you look at Brofist's team, built by the amazing TDK, it is a very, very strong offense team. You're going to be able to threaten pretty much anything with it. The problem, of course, is that Mega Manectric absolutely feasts on such offensive teams. Uh, Scizor gets O-Code, Bisharp gets O-Code. Yeah, Bisharp, Sucker Punch, whatever, but still scary. Rotom is not a good answer. Garchomp and Lando T both get HP Ice. Scarf Lando T, I think, is a significantly favored... D don't quote me on this, it's been a long time, but S Scarf Lando T... I, no, what am I talking about? It's not bulky. Scarf Lando T will drop to HP Ice. It, it, it might have a very low roll to live, but yeah. And Garchomp will live 1 HP Ice at full health, but it's still a major threat. So playing around Mega Manectric is the name of the game for Brofist here. Uh, while Mega Scizor, on the other hand, is not really a threat to X-Ray's team. It's uh, Lando T, ver uh, uh, Talent Flame, my god. You know, but Lando T and Manectric, he's got the two Intimidates, the Will-O-Whisper, the Bullet Punch Resistant Fire Move user. Yeah, so it's just going to be... It's an offensive Mega Scizor, so it might be annoying to switch into. If... If Brofus can maintain rocks and Talonflame's not a good switch, then Scizor might be able to push some damage on Lando T for the benefit of Chomp or Scarf Lando. But the... I also like that we see two Bisharp here, Classic Aorus. Uh, the biggest thing for Brofus here is going to be keeping enough health on Latios and or Rotom Wash and keeping Lando T healthy, because otherwise that's... You know, it, it sounds like a lot, but it, it, it goes by really, really quickly when you're trying to deal with Mega Manectric, you know, keeping these two Pokemon healthy. You know, Pokemon that are bulky, Latios and Rotom, but not Paragons of Manectric tanking. And Lando T, I mean, it wants to spam U-Turn, but there's going to be a Rocky Helmet Lando T here and an Iron Barb's Pharaoh, so it's going to get worn down very quickly, especially with Rocks up. And, yeah, the biggest thing for Brofus will be that he has a Bisharp against uh, a team whose method of dealing with physical attackers involves two Intimidate users, neither of which can switch in without triggering Defiant and making it very, very... and, and you know, getting KO'd, pretty much. So Bisharp, Ferrothorn, Talonflame are kind of checks, but yeah, could could get very nasty. So, uh, Minextric is obviously going to switch out of Latios because in Gen 6, the Mega Mechanic is that... Uh, you don't get the speed boost on the first turn. So on the first turn, it, Manectric is 339, and not three, uh, 405 like it is after a Mega. If it was Gen 7, then yes, you could you know, Mega and immediately get that 405 speed, which is part of why Mega Metagross was broken in Gen 7 and not 6. Just part of it, though. And some people still think uh, Mega Metagross is borderline. Actually, that's an old thought by this point. Anyway, uh, some might say, oh, well, in Aorus, you might fear Scarf uh, Lando T, or Scarf Lando T, Scarf Latios too, but on this team, it's going to be Scarf... Um, Lot Lando T almost surely. 
So uh, you just switch out there, and Brofus knows the switch is coming, so he goes for a Surf. And you're wondering, oh, well, why Surf if this is the Life Orb Latio set with Draco Surf, HP Fire, Filler, Defog, or Recover? Uh, then HP Fire is a good move, of course, but because it hits uh, Lottie, or sorry, Ferrothorn and Bisharp, but X-Ray is very aware of that, and so uh, Talonflame might have come in there, um, and especially Defensive Talonflame can roost off a Draco Meteor with ease, and obviously pivots into HP Fire, so it's a very good mid-ground play, and I have uh, mid-ground plays on my videos to make list. Uh, so... Yeah, Surf was trying to catch it there, and it also smacks Bisharp really hard. So this is an SD Bisharp, no pursuit shenanigans, and uh, Latios is also quite a threat. Thing is, Latios balances being a threat with being a Manectric check, and being a threat involves taking Life Orb recoil. So you see, just that 10% that it's already taken from its own Life Orb has made Manectric scarier. So Chomp comes in on the Sucker Punch, and I mean, that Bisharp could be pursuit. You know, you don't know, but it's generally going to be SD. And whether, uh, and Chop is a good switch because whether Bisharp sucker punches or knocks off, you know, it'll take a uh, rough skin and be worn down even more. And uh, if Pharaoh comes in on a surf, although you'd fear HP fire at this point, so maybe not. Uh, but nothing really wants to switch in here. And Garchomp is a good switch. Garchomp is a good 1v1 against everything here. Because it's got Lumberry, as I recall. Lumberry SD, so it's not immediately threatened by Talon. And Starmie uh, will not threaten it with Skull either. So, yeah, uh, it'll get up rocks at the worst against everything that isn't Manectric, and Manectric isn't coming in here. So it gets in completely for free against Sucker Punch. Now, Lando T comes in to match Chomp's rocks with its own. And what's coming in for Brofist? Rotom Wash, I assume. Yes, it is. Gonna threaten Burn. Because nothing really wants to switch into Burn here. The one burn immune is, I mean, the burn answers, you know, full stop, are Talonflame with its burn immunity and Starmie with its natural cure. Uh, but, yeah, you don't want Ferrothorn taking burn if you can't help it, and this is actually another, uh, initially overseen by me, <laughs> threat to X-Ray. The fact that uh, Rotom Wash is actually kind of annoying with uh, how easily it distributes burns here. Now, Manectric could, it could also Volt Switch, but Manectric could absorb the Volt Switch with Lightning Rod and get plus one special attack, and you don't want that. So it's a, it's a fairly delicate dance, but you could also just uh, go for the burn rather safely. And what's going to happen? Oh, Starmie comes in trying to switch in on the Will-O-Wisp, and then either spin if you just want to, you know, regain, have the rocks advantage briefly and convert that into a tempo advantage that translates into a KO, probably with Manectric. Very valid. Uh, you might even live. I, I think you'd actually live the Volt Switch, actually, too. So it's not like you'd be KO'd after, necessarily. Although Chomp would probably come in, so maybe not. Uh, but, you know, we're. It might not also be about staying in and rapid spinning. Because you wouldn't be able to keep up rocks on the Chomp. Uh, low health with the rough skin. Uh, you'd be you'd be toast. So it might be trying to draw a Volt Switch for Manectric to pivot in on. Or, you know, Rapid Spin on the attempted Hydro Pump or Will-O-Wisp for Manectric to come in on. You know, and then you'll see if you can switch to Ferrothorn, something like that, thinking ahead. Uh, but it's all about, you know, preserving the Manectric and getting the most out of it because of how much of a threat it is. So there's that. And Brofus beautifully does not let it even come to that. As, okay, yeah, you'd live, you know, a couple turns of Burn plus Volt Switch with that roll. But still, the chomp thing. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, you, you don't want to give Manectric that momentum with Volt Switch, but you know you don't want to switch Manectric into that that momentum. Actually, you know something very close to a KO with Volt Switch. Although I guess you could make the argument. I mean, you'd be terrified of Talonflame afterwards. But you could make the argument that if Manectric comes in, you just stay in and Hydro Pump it, so it's much less of a threat. You, you could make that argument, yeah. Uh, and because then it'll get chunked pretty badly and much easier to deal with. Then suddenly something as, uh, something like Scizor might come in. So you could make that argument, you know, Hydro Pump the Manectric if it uh, Volt Switches. And also the fact that Manectric is not going to risk itself to what seems like a very obvious Will-O-Wisp. So, yeah, great Volt Switch, great play by Brofist. Now here comes Scarflando T to threaten out the Starmie with a faster U-turn. 
Stormy's not quite down for the count, but it's uh, it's been chunked significantly. And it's going to get forced out here. And a beautiful double by Brofist to not activate the Lando T Rocky Helmet on his own Lando. And preserving that health is going to be really, really big. So instead he just racks up rocks. I mean, gets rocks on his own Latios, of course. So again, that Manectric Timer ticking very fast. Because the rocks are not going away for Brofist. That Latios is not going to have defog. Uh, so it's ticking very fast in terms of facing Manectric. But he's, getting, he's making a lot of ground with it. Uh, also, six turns in, no Mega Evolution, and not one happening on the next turn either. And Surf is the threat here, and beautiful HP Fire slamming the Ferrothorn. And now Draco Meteor is close to a KO button as well, because, you know, Bisharp can't take it anymore. Everything else drops, you know, with Rocks up, of course. And uh, Ferrothorn's close as well. So Latios is really getting worn down, but he's really getting the most, the most bang for his buck beautifully. And uh, Ferrothorn protecting for more lefties. Putting mind games in his head. Oh well, maybe it should. Maybe I should Draco now. But he pivots Starmie in, and Profus not wanting to concede any momentum to the Ferrothorn. Very beautiful uh, heads-up play because you concede momentum to that Ferrothorn, you're in trouble. You let something like Starmie or Talonflame switch into that HP fire, you're fine. So that's a great example uh, that you can learn from to not get wrapped up in the oh should I the the immediate mind games. And instead focusing on the game state, you do not want Ferrothorn spiking or leech seeding there. You know, then you're in in huge trouble. Uh, but whatever else you can handle. So uh, yes, now even Lando T is more threatening. Everything is more threatening for that Ferrothorn having been weakened like that. And it was a great heads-up play because you know what else is switching in uh, to avoid the KO. I mean, you saw how much that uh, Surf did. Even Starmie couldn't switch into that Surf with um, with Rocks up. It would have gotten KO'd by the extra damage. Nothing else wanted to switch in either, so really, really nicely done. So now here comes the Chomp at full health on the Starmie Recover. Uh, not quite going to... Was that in rough skin? I don't think it was in rough skin range after lefties. No, no, actually it was. It was, I think. If Unless I'm completely misremembering how much rough skin does. But no, it does. It does that. So there was a little bit of like a guessing game. Oh, do you Draco Meteor on the... Uh, on the rapid, on the recover, or do you chomp on the rapid spin? But chomp on rapid spin is fine because you don't, you know, you are able to preserve Latios' health a little more. It's even after rocks, it'll still be able to take. Maybe it'll be able to take one more HP ice, but uh, you are definitely. Hmm, it, it might have been worthwhile, but. But going to Chomp either way, I think, is fine, because you get to delete the Starmie and keep up rocks. I mm, I don't know if you can, necessarily, but he goes for the SD now, and now the Scalds are going to start coming. And his offensive Chomp, so they do a fairly strong chunk, but no, he just goes straight for a Dragon Claw. So functionally, maybe Drake going with Latios was better, because now Chomp is in range of Manectric HP Ice 2, and Manectric is faster even with the... Uh, with the Gen 6 Mega Mechanics, because Chomp hits 333. But, yeah, now in comes Scizor, so turn 13 is going to be the turn our first Mega goes off. And, yeah, so no rocks maintained there. Hmm. I do wonder if Draco in the Starmie was better. I mean, you don't want to Draco on, on Rapid Spin, yeah, but if you go to Chomp, you take damage there. And you don't, uh, I mean, obviously the ideal is chomp on, t to spin block and KO the Starmie in one fell swoop. But I don't think, uh, I mean, it was it was a tough move to make. So I, I actually, you know, I take it back. I think uh, it was a fine call. Obviously in hindsight, Drake going looks better because X-Ray has not been going for, has not been falling into the obvious trap so far in terms of uh, what he's been lured into, you know, with, um, Maybe not quite, but X-Ray is a very heads-up player. He's very aware of the fact that, you know, the move is chomp there because it's safe. And because that chomp move is so safe, then it makes it likelier that he'd recover. I, th I think that logic checks out. So, in comes Scizor and Manectric. Oh, sorry. Let me get the uh, full scope of that majestic Mega Evolution animation off. There it is. And... 
there's a flamethrower on the switch. So Scizor is not even going to... I mean, beautiful move, knowing that, hey, that uh, there's going to be a pivot into HP Ice here because you got three HP Ice weaknesses here. Chomp, Lottie, and Lando T. None of them can switch in. And Rotom, I mean, Rotom is a feasible switch in, but it seems a lot likelier to throw Scizor or Bisharp into it because, hey, at least they can chunk it with some strong priority. I mean, Mega Max Attack Mega Scizor is going to chunk a uh, bulkless Mega Manectric pretty nicely with Bullet Punch. So you either get a big chunk on it or you force it out, kind of. And yeah, Talonflame would come in, but uh, hey, you're not losing a Pokemon to Manectric at that point. So all uh, pretty good, all things considered. And it was a beautiful move by X-Ray to stay ahead of that by flamethrowering on the Switch. So, uh, and obviously Bisharp threatens even more with Sucker Punch. Although it's, you're never going to risk Bisharp there given how valuable it is. Scizor was much less valuable. So you get some priority on Manectric. Hey, that's, all, that's pretty good. Some strong priority at that, even though it's resisted. And uh, also you might potentially draw a Flamethrower to pivot... Rotom into more securely? I don't know. I, I don't... Because you could say, oh, well, Volt Switch could be used there, but be really, really nice uh, Flamethrower from X-Ray. And uh, also demonstrates that it is Flamethrower and not Overheat, which is actually better here because uh, Bisharp is always going to drop to Flamethrower, and now you cannot uh, draw a minus two special attack from it. I mean, not that it really needs to Overheat anything else, but yeah. Um... No, actually, it is kind of significant. So in comes Lando T, and now Brofist doesn't even have the rocks advantage. So I think he goes for U-turn here to be on the safe side. Yeah, he goes for U-turn just to be on the safe side because he's willing to get a little bit of chip damage on Lando T now if it means he guarantees getting rocks back up with Chomp because now the rocks are permanent. Uh, Starmie will not be able to spin them away anymore. And that's good. That's huge for Talonflame, and of course, chip on Manectric. Uh, as well as, well, Bisharp and Ferrothorn are both at 36. That's totally interesting. Uh, so, and if Manectric were to stay in, he's chunked it a little bit with U turn and can make his next move from there. So, uh, good move. And now here comes Chomp to get those rocks back up and maybe get some more chip on Lando T. There, if it doesn't have HP Ice, which most defensive Lando T... Oh, well, that one did. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember a lot of them being a SD, even the defensive ones, to help with Mega Sableye. But that one does have HP Ice. But here comes Latios for another KO. Nothing is stopping Surf from dropping something here. I mean, theoretically, Ferrothorn could uh, switch into Surf and draw HP Fire for Talonflame to pivot into, but that's tough. And nope, he's just gonna. What am I talking about? Surf. He just goes for a Draco, which would smack even Ferrothorn at this point. I mean, it wouldn't KO it, but it'd bring it low enough to where, you know, it's not shrugging it off like it would Surf. You know, it would really be on Death's Door. Whereas with Surf, you know, you protect, you bounce that off. And at minus two with HP Fire afterwards, you're still gonna be fine. So Draco was the move there. Now, you're definitely in Manectric range, so it is coming in and claiming another KO. Uh, unless you're going to try and uh, Rotom your way into it. But nope, you're just going to take the safe sacrifice and then go to Lando T again. The only way... I mean, this is... Look how terrifying Mega Manectric is. It's only even taken one round of Rocks damage, so it's well out of Bisharp range still. It's really, really tough uh, endgame here. I mean, I know that X-Ray's team is very weakened, but in terms of the response to Mega Manectric, he's still very, very good. It's all going to be... Uh, you still got the advantage, and it's going to be up to that Bisharp and Rotom to try and launch a comeback. So, in comes another U-turn, just to guarantee that chip. You know, maybe if you can get a Rotom into it. I don't remember the calc of T-Bolt into Rotom. I can't imagine it's good. But also, T-Bolting into Scarf uh, Lando T like that would be kind of insane. But he gets the chip, you know. Uh, I mean, okay, he gets his own Lando T-Chip, so it only has one more Rock Switch. No, two more Rock Switch. Apolo uh, apologies. Two more Rock Switches. Uh, but he also even gets 7% on the Lando, so hey, that'll help with uh, if Bisharp has to force it out with Sucker Punch. But no, that's not going to happen. Rotom's going to come in, and with Ferrothorn so weakened, then Hydro Pump is fairly free. Is he going to Hydro Volt Switch? He vo <sighs> Relentless, knowing the Lando T is not going to get sacked there. And now he's going to go to Bisharp and claim a KO, as nothing is switching in with Roxa. So he's just going to go right for the knockoff, I believe. At least one, cause no, you, you don't want to go for SD because uh, Talonflame can ruin you. And obviously Talon is the response here. 
the sharp shows life orb, so that sucker punch is really going to hurt. So I think Manectric. Well, obviously, um, if you come into Revenge Kill the Manectric, if Manectric ever switches into you, then yes, you will get uh, the attack boost and you will destroy it. Uh, so that's well within range. But in terms of outside being. Uh, I'm actually being in sucker range even uh, when Bisharp comes in against it. I think it's uh, it's already there. It, it's very close at the very least. But yeah, Talon comes in now, threatens Willow, and it's going to have to try and pull some Roost shenanigans. And now nothing switches into Hydro Pump. Not well, anyway. You know, Manectra can take one, but you don't want it taking one. So either you Willow Peer and then Roost Stall and eventually lose Talon Flame, accuracy willing. Or you, yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it. So the Wisp does go off out of necessity. You want to hit Bisharp and uh, Rotom, and now and you want to will it was first, so you get an extra turn of burn effectively rather than roosting and then burning it. And uh, you're roosting back up to full anyway. And that Hydro, I mean, <sighs> 67. I mean, it's but F Talon into uh, bulky Rotom, so yeah, it takes it okay, but still not something you're gonna stall out. I mean without accuracy intervening, and that one does a lot more, that does 76, so, uh, Hydro, I mean, you could also say, yeah, also will wisp accuracy, so, anyway, uh, third Hydro hits, and down goes Talon, and now Manectric, there's no way this is in Manectric range, my god, but neither is, uh, Rotom's T-Bolt going to take it out, yep, so there's, uh, I was just gonna volt switch. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice. Hmm. As opposed to hydro, because I think hydro would have brought it really close to getting KO. But I guess you you really wanted to guarantee that sucker punch range. And in comes Bisharp. Yeah, Bisharp against two Intimidator. So it, it's not about the power anymore. It's about trying to stall out a sucker punch with switches. But there's only uh, so many Stealth Rock switches, and then the Scarf Lando T to follow it up. So he's got to be careful. So Brof is very feasibly... And he, Brof still has all eight Sucker Punches. And, um... Yeah, I do wonder... Maybe Hydro was it, but... You know, I don't know. I don't have the Sucker Punch calc into Manectric off the top of my head, so... I think... Yeah, I mean... The more accurate option might have been Will-O-Wisp, because Will-O-Wisp is uh, more accurate than Hydro Pump. And then you can no longer stall out. Um, then you can no longer stall out Sucker Punch nearly as well. The issue is more going to boil down to taking out the Lando T because you want to Sucker Punch the Lando T. Otherwise, it will EQ you, and the Scarf Lando does not have HP Ice, so you will lose that. And Rotom has been KO'd, so I guess it effectively doesn't matter what you do into the Manectric. If you don't, um, yeah, it functionally doesn't matter what you do into the Manectric so much as how you deal with the Lando T after in terms of nailing the uh, Sucker Punch versus knockoff element. And I wonder if the move would have been to go to Lando on the Force T Bolt and force out Manectric that way and get the extra rocks damage. I wonder, I wonder. But yeah, now Bisharp is in, threatening Sucker Punch. Go right for the knockoff, it's the first turn, no way he doesn't uh, scout it. There's the first boost, and there's the sucker punch. And I'm, obviously Lando T doesn't have to uh, scout, or uh, doesn't have to fight against sucker punch by switching. Lando T can also go for stealth rock. And uh, there is indeed sucker punch and stealth rock. But it's, it's rough. It's, uh... Yeah, we also have to consider that we don't know how fast the Bisharp is or how slow the Lando T is. Because you know, Lando T's in this time were generally faster, but fast enough for Bisharp, we don't know. Especially if the Bisharp is jolly, which is very, very possible. Nowadays, I don't think you'd ever see that, but back then I think it was uh, more feasible. It was something people took, uh, took seriously. And there's Manectric switching out, and there's another Sucker Punch. And uh, actually, you kind of have to get that Stealth Rock in there because you see how quickly these are getting worn down by those switches. But you also, and you can't switch forever because then Lando T could theoretically just KO both of them with like knockoff and, uh, or Stone Edge. And then, yeah. And even if uh, it gets KO'd by knockoff on Rocky Helmet, if the Manectric is KO'd beforehand, 
then Rotom Wash would still be alive because it wouldn't actually enter on Stealth Rock. Uh, so you would still have the game won. And Manextra comes in, plus three, <laughs> and it gets knocked off. And that is the ball game pretty much. Pretty much, and X-ray forfeits. I, yeah, okay. I mean, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's the game. So, thank you guys so much for uh, reminiscing with me about the good old days of Mega Evolutions. And um, oh, that's the other Mega I was thinking of that has a really cool place in the in the. Uh, it, the Mega that's not like just an improved version of its regular form, but brings something new to the table. Like earlier we mentioned like uh, Manectric and Altaria, but it's not so much in Gen 6, but in Gen 7, I really like what Mega Aggron brings to the table. I think it has a super cool place in the metagame. I, I really like the teams that are used with it. I think it's fantastic. So that's a, another example. So... Yeah, alright, that's uh, about it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.